Well, I just thought it was a good idea to um, give you, my fellow collectors, um, an update on the situation of the collection that I'm dealing with, which is that of the EMG Colonel, Stephen Pepia, bless him. It's a very odd thing to be doing this, you know, because um, we were friends and he'd often ring me up and ask what do you think of this record or that record or I just found this and it's great or that and what do you think of that price I've got five copies of this or you know um, make comment on well everything <laughs> records eBay sales SAS auctions we both had a good laugh at those I'll miss that um, and it feels like deja vu, a lot of this collection, because I kind of knew it. He'd say things, and I'd think, oh, blimey, that's unusual. And, uh, you know, they, they turned up. Recently, there's been an entire box of um, Disco File Fonse and uh, Loiselier, and what's the other one there? Oh, Lumen, Chant du Monde. French classical stuff that just doesn't show up in this country. I remember him talking about that and saying that uh, he'd got it and it had it was all EMG sleeves, you know, the the ones with no holes and a picture of a gramophone on it. And it had a label on it from the Dolmetsch family, and you know that's turned up. Anyway, uh, I'm rambling. I'm going to do a lot of that. Um, I hope you've got patience. So, where we are now is my uncle, bless him, I'd be absolutely hosed without my uncle, because he has... <laughs> he's not just taking on a few records, folks. He has a shed on his driveway full of records, or it will be full of records by the time we've finished. Uh and it will be an unorganised heap, and I'm going to have to try and organise it in some way, because there's a, there's a lot, a lot of stuff I don't want. Some of that, you know, basically, uh, what's happening to the stuff I don't want is this. Eventually, an auction house, JNS, J no, it's not JNS, it's this, JS, JS Fine Art Auctions, will come, and they will... Have a look. Well, but no, they won't have a look. They'll take everything, basically. Everything that's left in the house, they'll take. Um, which includes his EMG, so... I'll probably, when it's all done and dusted, I'll probably post another update. And when I know when the EMG will be sold and his other gramophones, I'll let, I'll let everyone know over uh, Facebook groups and I'll probably post a comment on this in the other video. He had a lot of grams. There's a there's a back bedroom in his house which is absolutely chock a block with portable grams. We accidentally took one back, uh, thinking it was a, a record case and it wasn't the record case, it was a Columbia Portable. And I think I might keep it because it's lovely and I don't know. But I'll I'll check with the solicitor. There's a solicitor involved, he's dealing with it all. Um Thankfully, he's really dragging his feet. If he said, right, you've got two weeks, we wouldn't... We might just be able to do it at this point, but if he'd said that a week ago, we'd have been really up a creek without a paddle. So, the shed's been built. Uh, some of it's going into my cellar, some of it's going into my parents' garage... There's another couple of van loads, maybe three van loads to go. Within three weeks or four weeks, this should all be cleared up and the York Canal should come in. If you want to come and look through the records, they will be cheap, that are left, you can feel free to do that. Most of it's electrical stuff. Most of it isn't rare. There's not much jazz or dance band stuff, but there's a lot of... Uncommon records. Uh, there's a, I'll tell you what there is. There's a lot of um, 
really good grand opera that I already have. Um, so a lot of Caruso, Shelley have been singers like that, you know, famous singers. A lot of uh, Laurie Volpe records. Uh, I have quite a lot of those and never got on with him. I don't know why. Ah, I'll tell you what, talking to Grand Opera, he once told me that he thought he had about 20,000 Grand Opera records. And I thought, he's he's got to be over-exaggerating that. And you know what, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he was. There's, there, there's, there's thousands of them. There's not just a few thousand. There are thousands and most of them are well worth having. There's a lot of Phonotypia, a lot of Odeon, a lot of G&T, various incarnations of, a lot of Italian label HMVs, just ridiculous. I mean, we, we found a whole cupboard, like a cabinet, full of Russian records and most of them are pre-revolutionary it's not late cccp stuff it's incredible what what's turning up i knew he had a good collection and at the time i thought steven's collection is probably in a sense the best collection of acoustic records in the uk because he doesn't have berliners coming out of his ear holes he doesn't have well not so far he doesn't i think there are more berliners than i've found in fact i'm sure there are um, I have found quite a few, but there, I'm sure there are more. You know, it's not like a collection of rarities, but he has so many rare labels, so much stuff I've never seen before. We we found Welsh jumbo, German jumbo, all kinds of odd jumbos, I don't know what was with that, he must have picked up a horde of them, I, I think they may have eventually at some point uh, not eventually, but you know what I mean at some point I think they came from Roger Fawn uh, just loads of incredible stuff I, I'd never seen a clarion record a couple of months ago, I've now got about seven and one of them's in its original sleeve so yeah, I mean it's humbling to go through it, in a way. He really was passionate about this stuff. And I think those who talk rubbish about him, one chap in particular who knows very well who he is, because he's the idiot that I've bothered to write back to, they have forgotten the fact that he was a person with likes and dislikes and whatnot. And that, whatever you think of him, he put together one heck of a collection. I have, you know what, in all this stuff, I might have found a hundred 1940s and 50s records. And I must have looked through 40 or 50,000 records. Probably more than that, actually. He must have had, he, he had more than a hundred thousand records, I'm, I'm pretty sure. There was, um, just, I mean, there, there was, when we went into the garage, there's about seven foot on each side, so two lots, seven rows high, and a massive load in between, and boxes and boxes and boxes stacked on each other of records, and then there was more behind it all. There's... I've never seen so many records. This is an enormous amount of records, and I've not found a whole lot of rubbish. I mean, consider the amount of records I've looked through, there might be 5,000 that I don't want. No, 6,000, because a friend of mine took a load. Um, you know, that's not, it's not a big deal, really. There's quite a lot of... Um, Gilbert and Sullivan sets, so if you like those, there's multiple copies of most of those. And, as I said, they'll be cheap. So he's in his house is in Daventry. Easy to get to Oxford, really. And um, I think we'll have to arrange a time 
for people to come and have a look at this because what will happen is all of his unwanted by me records because I've been left them in his will I'm the sole guardian if you like of Stephen's records all the stuff I don't want will just end up in enormous job lots at JS who don't really want them so yeah uh, it would be great if people could come and have a look through a lot of what I've found is in incredible condition for what it is as well so I should imagine a lot of what's there will be in decent nick and this, all this all that I've said is not counting the fact that he had about one more than 5,000 records that were in albums no, hang on a minute, that's well, yeah, thinking about it now, it's got to be 5,500, because there's over 500 albums of 12 discs each. He made these things. He he got those um, card white card covers that you can buy and put sort of like, I think it's like hardboard on either side of them and labelled them up. That was his proper organised collection, and there's, a, there's thousands of records in there. And that's just for 10-inch albums. I don't know whether 12-inch albums are. Yeah, they're probably behind something. Everything's behind something in this house. It's a tip. Um, so there's, there's thousands of records there, and I haven't even looked through those. And that's where his really rare stuff was. There's seven albums, so 12 records each, 12 times 7, 84 G&Ts. There's albums and albums of single-sided sonophones. There's loads of twins double-sided arenas it is like i said it's humbling to go through it as an acoustic record collector this is a dream slash nightmare come true he used to say to me on the phone quite often oh you'll end up with all this one day and i used to think whatever steve of course i will he was jolly well right wasn't he so uh collectors start writing your wills <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to all mine. I mean, I, I've got all this now, and I had a good 14,000, maybe more, um, before. So, yes, uh, uh, it's it's sobering. It really is. Well, I'll stop rambling. I hope this has been informative. So, shed's built, records are going in it, and there's a few more van loads to go, and then it's all done come and have a look through if you can uh, like I said jazz collectors you might as well not bother um, rock and roll collectors you should definitely not bother there's not a lot of 50s stuff but if you just like records come and have a look they'll be cheap as chips and uh, I'll make another later <laughs>